Morning, everyone. Coming at you live from Bend, Oregon. I'm with my buddy, Ethan Ebersold, and we've been kind of in hibernation mode this winter, wouldn't you say? Sweatpants. <laughs> Hanging out in sweatpants <laughs> and hoodies. Um, it was 22 degrees last night, and we've been sitting by the fire for about four hours and decided maybe it was time we should go for a paddle. We both have new boats. What's your yeah. new boat? Yeah, I, I picked up a Current Designs Nomad. So it's a long, ruddered, I think 19 foot sea kayak. Um, I just wanted a big gear hauler type of boat. I could go from here to the coast uh -huh. with maybe a few little portages. And it's a cockpitted boat, so haven't put it on the water yet. Cool, and I've got a brand new S18S. They're sit on top um, from, Stellar. from Stellar Kayaks. And it's kind of the same. It's built for speed built for efficiency, built for hauling gear, and I haven't even opened it yet. So two brand new boats, we're gonna go for a paddle, give you guys our initial feedback, and uh, hopefully get the blood pumping and get some exercise. Yeah, yeah, we gotta move. All right, let's do it. Where is this thing? Uh, I put it way up high, just cause it was so long, I didn't wanna hit my head on it. Oh yeah. All right, you got some suspense to answer, set it up on? Let's yeah. do that. Okay, here it is. Yep. The Nomad. Yeah, so I think this is a rework of their Extreme, which is like 19 feet, uh, is it 21 inches wide, I think? They're 21 and a half. Yeah, so why a 19 footer? What's the benefit of, the, of all this length? Well, you're gonna get quicker to speed, more haul speed, and then carrying capacity. I think, you know, if you were doing a Columbia River trip, multi-day or San Juan Islands covering distance, and you wanna just drop the rudder in and turn into a you know motor for your boat i think this is a good choice yeah look at how much water line that thing has see how flat it is back there not a whole lot of rocker profile just all built for speed for tracking this is a boat you get in and you just click off miles look at how sharp and long the entry is on this thing what a beautiful beautiful craft always been a fan of the long current designs north american style touring boats yeah, this is what they do right. All right, here's my boat. It hasn't even been unwrapped yet. It's me the maiden voyage. All the rest of these are going to my dealer up in Portland, Portland Kayak Company. Ooh. All right, one hand in this one. This thing is super light. This one's made out of carbon Kevlar on the whole. Fiberglass deck. Comes in weighing at about 36 pounds. Maybe a little 37, but still pretty darn light. Look at that, carbon fiber foot pedals with grippy on them. That's nice. So here we go. Uh, you don't, you have a baler basically. Yep. Uh, instead of scupper holes, so you can close it off, right? Right, you can close it off, and if you're up above about three miles an hour, you can just pop this thing down, just like that. And what that does is it creates a venturi effect, so as the water flows past it, it wants to draw the water out this little hole. And you can flip it all the way open if you're going through surf or you need uh, a little bit more. Flip this all the way open and then that just drops it all the way down about this much, which clears the water out real quick. But if you're not going fast enough, then it's going to uh, let water in. So that's where we're gonna run it today. Nice. Okay, so we've got it all unwrapped here. Um, it comes in with two different rudder options. So I went for the understern rudder and what the understood rudder means, that's going to mount in this general direction of the boat. And what that does is it moves the turning point forward, makes this boat more maneuverable, more controllable. The downside is you have a blade hanging down underneath your boat. So if you hit something, it hits the blade and it has the potential to bend your shaft. Versus a kick-up rudder, if you hit something, it will flip up out of the way. Um, six of one, half dozen of the other, just really depends on where you're paddling. I plan on paddling this mostly in lakes and open water, so I went with the understern. All right, get it cranked out. That's all set. You don't want it to be too tight. You want it to be able to have a little bit of movement in there. Just perfect, just about like that. This has a foot plate as opposed to foot pedals. Definitely more of a surf ski feel. You got a nice big plate to press your heels against. You've got this neoprene strap over your feet to really add a uh, connection to the boat. And then this deep seat pan that you can, uh, you know, kind of sit in and lock into the boat that way. They do have a back band that's available for this as well if you wanted more back support, but I'm kind of traditional with my surf ski. I like it, just the pan. Oh, 
I like to note that he has a brand new truck over there. And this is what we always take to go battling. Can we just talk about the boat to truck value ratio here? I think we probably have a total of, let's see, that's like $4,299. This one's like $4,800 for the multi-sport layup. So, I mean, after taxes, you're probably talking $10,000 worth of boats on easily a $1,200 truck. I don't know about that. <laughs> that's perfect for what we're doing. Mm. Yeah. We made it over to Tumalo Creek, right here in downtown Bend, right on the Deschutes River. We're gonna use our put in today, but first we'll go say hi. Mm -hmm. Hi, puppy. <laughs> That's the guard dog. What's his name? That is Wilson. Wilson. The legendary Tumalo Creek canoe and kayak, you guys. Fully stocked for winter. Good, how you doing? What up? It's always interesting. I'm so used to sitting in eddy lines. You start getting used to that profile of a boat, right? Yeah. You the know? thing's got a pretty small cockpit, it yeah, looks like. Yeah, it does. You're this, in there. This is where I find out about my hips as an aging dad bod. But it's good. That is a lot of boat. A lot of boat. Feels super predictable. Shallow arch under me. Yeah, definitely what I was looking for. It's just right off the bat, something you could be sitting there looking at the eagle up there or the cliff. Yeah, that's what is always surprising to people is like they hear 20, 21 inches wide and think automatically think tippy. But when you have that sort of length, it adds a lot of stability to the boat too. We do have a bit of a shallow river here, so I'm going to be very mindful of that under stern rudder. I'm going to have to loosen up all sorts of stuff here. All right, I'm in. It feels interesting to be on top as opposed to being in. I'm so used to being in the kayak with my knees touching. A surf ski is more tight together, your heels are together, all about translating power to forward momentum. So it definitely feels fast, but not exactly uh, relaxed. <laughs> All right, ready to go? Check these things out. Show me the deep lines, Ethan, because this thing is shallow. Oh my gosh, it feels fast, so. So when you're following somebody, you see how Ethan's throwing those bubbles with his paddle? You want to get in right behind him. Just draft him. You can tell he's using his feet by how his rudder's wobbling back and forth. Going for the rudder up technique. Ooh, shallow water. <laughs> And you, when you hit shallow water, you can just feel it. You can feel the boat slow down. Just the way it displaces water if you don't have enough depth. How'd that feel? Feels fast. You guys hear that? Every one of my videos in the past probably six videos, there's been the resounding sound of leaf blowers in the background. So I keep doing voiceovers because everywhere is leaf blowers. I guess it's fall. I gotta give people a little grace. You gotta blow your leaves, right? Let's see it, blast off. Hey, look at that baby go. Tell you what, the understern rudder wasn't necessarily the tool for the job. I've only hit one time, but I have to be real selective with my line choice.
one thing I really enjoy about a surf ski is having your feet close together and really be able to like push and drive the power through those heels. It's amazing how much more forward force you can put into the boat just by having that solid foot brace. But it's fun to get two totally different boats on the water together to see how they do. Maybe. It's just like, you know, boat you can take a nap in. Yeah. Yeah, this one you're engaged. Your core muscles are engaged and working in this boat. Surprised for an 18 foot boat how maneuverable it feels with that understeering rudder. You just kick your feet and that thing swings right around. Oh, there's a shallow bit. <laughs> so far, I've only hit the rudder once. But I've missed a few good opportunities. So cool to have a spot like this right in the middle of town. If you live anywhere around Bend, Oregon, consider yourself lucky. This is a pretty special paddling destination. Anything from mountain lakes to white water to flat water rivers and all within, I don't know, half hour, 45 minute drive of town. Cool. It's as far as I need to go. What a nice paddle. Oh, Ethan's gonna go get in the mix. Yeah. Trying to put the first scratch in his new boat here. Hey man, you want to switch boats? Sure. I want to try that thing out. Really you guys, this is uh, so much less about a boat review, more just about two guys that love paddling and screwing off in boats. So if you're looking at this as like an expert boat review of either of these kayaks, this is not what today's about. I might need to adjust those foot pedals back for you though. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Maybe I do need to get wet to get in this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to. I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> what did your dad used to say? Sometimes you gotta get free. <laughs> How do those feel? Do they need to come back at all? Yeah, just a touch. So I'll show you. On either side, you have this little yellow flipper. You just slip that guy up. Ka chunk. Ka chunk. One more between your heels. Sorry. Got this one here too. Now, now it should just slide back to wherever you need it to be. Perfect. Right there? Yeah, a little further. How about Thanks, there? Dude. You're in the demo day thing. Right? Yeah, you know, Appreciate only the finest. Is this boat tippy? <laughs> there are no tippy boats, sir, just tippy paddlers. Oh, that might be me. <laughs> All right, dude, you're in. Yeah. Sporty, huh? Look at the difference when you have these things side by side. Look at how narrow that thing is in the cockpit versus this one. Yeah. But it's, but not looking like, it's fine. It's not like claustrophobic, it just. Different, uh, different use of volumes, different style. All right, give it a rip. Let's see how she does. Woo! All right, I'm excited to paddle the Nomad. This is a boat that I have looked at and seen in catalogs for basically my whole paddling life, but I've never got to paddle it. Look at how small that cockpit is, though. Woo Definitely doing a one leg at a time on this guy. This is uh... a. Yeah. Shin clipper. But once you're in, it feels super cozy. If I was to do that again, I would just do a little bit different style. I would go uh, legs and then butt, but whatever. Okay, I'm in. No skirt, but that's fine. Has the rudder on the back, which is up but solid foot pedals with toe control, which is really nice. They used to just be push-pull style. I hate that, this is way better. Good job, current design. Let's check this thing out. Yeah, I mean, just the leverage difference, you know, being up high. Uh-huh. 
Have you paddled a surf ski much, Ethan? No, never. You look good. First time in a surf ski, I had no idea. Looks like he knows what he's doing. Paddling is paddling. Got this old GTS going. Now this thing feels more traditional, more like what I'm used to, what I grew up in. Obviously a bit longer, but tons of connection with your thighs. But your feet are in a lot different position. You're more splayed out. So you're not translating the power to the boat quite the same. With that said, I'd much rather sit in this thing for eight hours a day, cruising the San Juans than, uh, than that Stellar. But definitely has way less get up and go. Just gotta decide what's important to you. Check out the rudder here. Oh, that rudder deploys easy. I love the new foot pedal styles. Oh, I think it feels smooth. Yeah, it is. It's like a giant station wagon. Throw your gear. I'm probably cruising you guys at five miles an hour right now with just no effort. Now, I think if I were to push it to six, I don't know if we'd want to go. Yeah, maybe. Let's try it. Let's ramp it up and see what we can get this thing to. I mean, it feels super efficient. Not as fast as that Stellar. The faster you paddle that Stellar, the faster it wants to go. This thing kind of has a, a very efficient clip that it likes to cruise at. And that's what you're going to get out of it. I bet if you load it with gear, it would even get more forgiving, more stable. But yeah, all in all, it feels very predictable, very comfortable. I don't think I could catch him. We'll make you question everything. Why well, anybody would have a gym membership. Yeah, hey. <laughs> I love it. It just feels like a fitness machine, except I don't have to like hear people being like, one more rep, dude, <laughs> one more rep. Sir, did you spray down that machine? <laughs> um, sir, we have a group class happening here in just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a whole different scene out here, man. We have the place to ourselves. And I gotta say, this boat flies so yeah. smooth on the water. Yeah, just like a freight train. Get it up to speed and cruise all day. Yeah, that is the real difference. Like, it doesn't necessarily feel slower, but the power translation and acceleration in that boat feels like it just wants to go. And they have a 14 foot version of it. It's just ridiculously stable and easy to paddle. And it still has, it not, doesn't have the top end speed, but it still has that lightweight feel and acceleration. Gotta add one of these to the quiver. Uh, wait till I get him in with the wing paddle. I mean, he's really gonna be mind blown. All right, we're cruising back into the dock. I think we're gonna go back. We're gonna do a little debrief on the shore. Just talk about what we liked, what we didn't like, and who we think these boats are right for. Cause I think that's the most important part of this video. It's not that we're comparing the boats. It's more just playing in boats, but they're very different machines. So it'd be cool to just uh, get Ethan's take on what he thinks about it. It's his first time in a surf ski. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll just kind of break it down for you guys. Thirty-five pounds, man. Isn't that crazy with two hatches? Like in the summertime, just like swimsuit PFD paddle go. Yeah. All right, the high dock exit, eh? And this cockpit on me was tight. Like yeah. It's like, hard to pull the knee out of that boat. Sad. So you're gonna so have what I'm to. What I'm gonna try to do is use the um, do the old paddle trick and put the paddle behind me. Yeah. Use that for some stability. It's a little high, but it should just work fine. There we go. Oh, once I'm up to there, see how I like paddle acts like a nice outrigger. Yeah, and your blade's not taking the pressure either, which is good. Boom. There you go. All right, you can just keep... looked easier with the paddle trick. Yeah. I wonder if you could do that on a sit on top. I did the belly roll. Yeah. All right, so we made it back to Tumalo Creek. Now we're going to break it down for you guys. Two totally different units, right? So 
who do you see paddling each one of these? I, I, and I bought this one for myself, but really for what we just did and for what I do day in and day out, though I have other boats for that purpose, that this is a great boat for around here. Like I, I came down here pretty much every evening around sunset and I used a solo canoe just for fitness, a long solo canoe. This would be, you know, just as uh, another option to get the kayak style workout. This would be a lot of fun. This would be my daily driver here. Yeah. I bought this boat to kind of fill a hole in my purpose, which was, gosh, what if I want to do a really big trip and I just want fast, stable, gear hauling, like seaworthy, ruddered craft. That's what this is. So I don't think I'll paddle this much at all in town here. Yeah. Maybe to like Waldo Lake to paddle across and set up a campsite or something. The paddling station in that, just being narrower, I'm up higher, my feet are below me, tight together. That's a fitness workout. This, you still feel like you're moving a touring boat, you know, which is, yeah. which is what it is. That's a fitness workout. You know, the other thing with this is like when I got up near that rapids and we were just playing around, it was just a lot of boat to manage in that. Yeah. So that's where like that Sitka from Eddie Line or even a Fathom would be better. But this thing, we went up there and you just kind of turn around and get your fitness workout. You're not going to play in the Eddie shelf necessarily. Yeah. Maybe a little deeper you would, um, but it was pretty shallow. Um, so yeah, I think if I was doing daily workouts, that's the boat. Um, and perfect for around here. Boat, paddle, life jacket, go. So it kind of feel like I looked at our top speeds and they're actually not too dissimilar in either one of these boats. The biggest difference is the acceleration of this boat. Yeah. It was a touch faster, but only like 0.5 miles per hour. Yeah, for me, it's the uh, just like the comfort of being able to do a repetitive forward stroke over and over. A narrower station, up a little bit higher. When I'm in this, I feel like I'm adapting my stroke a little bit because I have a big touring boat, right? I have, gosh, you even have a couple little knocks in there. Whereas this, I can just keep things nice and low or, or high, but I'm not. Nice and tight. I nice think. and tight is a better way to put it. Yeah, I'm just. I can just keep doing the stroke where I have to adapt. I think if I was really using this for fitness, I'd actually elevate myself in it a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Just to have that a little bit more. But yeah, I like that too. Yeah, your butt being a little bit higher. When you put the power to the water, and you can just drive through the heels. It just feels like it wants to take your energy and put it into forward motion. Yeah. That I mean, this cool. feels like my running shoes. Like, it's just fast. I get a workout, and I'm done. Like, that's, I love the idea of just, you know, surf shorts in the summer and a pfd and a paddle and a boat and gone yeah and i can do one trip from a long carry from the parking lot because it's only what 30 some pounds mm -hmm. i like that a lot so in my time with the boats i think the nomad is a very cool craft it felt comfortable it felt like a boat that i was if i was doing i go back to our delta trip yeah. where you're just in a boat for six to eight hours a day you're cruising you're taking pictures and we're you're making coffee in the boat right you're not there's hardly anywhere to get out that's what draws me to this boat. It's comfy. When I got in this industry in the early 2000s, we had the West Coast Sea Kayak Symposium. And you'd go to that event in Port Angeles or Port Townsend, and the beach would be full of these long 18-foot rudder boats. And one of the reasons I got this is you're just not finding them out there as much anymore. Right. There's mm -hmm. not many manufacturers, particularly in this case, made in the U.S., um, doing this kind of thing. I just felt like, gosh, Kevlar, long boat with a rudder. I better get one in the quiver. Yeah, get yeah. it while you can. Yeah. Well, there used to be a lot of Canadian companies, but a lot of them quit importing into the U.S. a few years ago. Right. Some of them retired and just or just went away, and then some of them also went to where the momentum and the meat of the market is, right? Which yep. is light touring and recreational. So, um, I mean, if you own a couple different bikes in your garage for different purposes, that's kind of would help you understand why we might have something like this. Totally. So I guess that's the answer to the question: is one's not better than the other, but they're both pretty great. And you should uh, evolve a quiver. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can. It's nice. No more, less compromise when you can have more choices. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. Well, thanks for paddling. It was fun. Glad it warmed up for us. Nice color. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I know the audio was a little bit rough in that last bit, but I also thought the conversation was worth sharing with all of you. We had a great time playing in boats. Uh, Super random that we both had new boats that we hadn't paddled yet and we wanted to check out. And Ethan's always good for that. He always gets me off the couch and in the kayaks, even when it's 20 something degrees outside. So shout out to Ethan from Happy Paddling. If you're not already, go subscribe to his channel. I'll put a link right here. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. We had a blast playing in those new boats today. And um, hopefully you found this video helpful. If nothing else, you found it entertaining. Until next time, you guys, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one.